Greetings, Cosmeteers, and welcome back to, well, Cosmeteer, as it happens, and to our fleet, which is actually now starting to uh, deserve the title of fleet. Now, in the last episode, we designed two fighters, quote-unquote, though uh, I do suffer from the problem that I'll start off with every honest intention to make a small uh, fighter craft and end up making something much, much bigger, as it was the case here. Now, I left the decision on which of the two designs we were going to keep moving forward. Now, I didn't necessarily say that uh, we were going to simply discard the uh, design that didn't win, but for the time being, it would be going back on the shelf, maybe to be revised later. And hands down, the Dapper 4 won out. People were quite enamored by the uh, the avian style, and, and I, I do approve, I do approve. But uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you, oh, do you see what I did there? I was completely unintentional, please, I'm sorry. Uh, we've got the Hercules. A lot of people came together to suggest the Hercules. Of course, in reference to the rhinoceros beetle, uh, beetle uh, subspecies. Uh, well, is it a, really a subspecies of rhinoceros beetle? It's a type of rhinoceros beetle, regardless. But Hercules seems apt on so many levels. And also, you know, kind of tickles my uh, classical studies fancy. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go with the Hercules. Enough people suggested it. So there we go. The Dapper Tooth finally has its name. And I think it's a reasonably, uh, reasonably fitting name, considering the Role. However, what I wasn't expecting was for someone to blindside me with a name for the Dapper Four. I had so many avian themed names. But the one that went out was still an insect name, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna paint it as anything that it was. I'm hopelessly biased. Someone suggested Fire Ant. Now, A, that kind of lined up with the colour scheme that I'd done off camera, uh, but I've been feeling a tad nostalgic for Robocraft of late. And uh, this this reminds me very much of my pride and joy in that game. The main battle tank, the Solenopsis in Wichter, the uh, imported red fire ant. And uh, so we're going to go with the fire ant for Dapper 4. Let me uh, show that there. There we are, fire ant. We're not going to go for Solenopsis in Wichter. That would, that would seem weird to stick that onto a fighter. It was, after all, this honking, great, massive battle tank of a thing. Uh, still, sadly... Our little fighter down here only has the, the title fighter. So what I'm going to do, we're going to save the ship design. We're going to save over fighter if I can. Uh, hopefully that is a thing I can do. Yes, it is. We're going to overwrite that. Now, a good couple of people uh, suggested various little tweaks and balances that we could do with the fire ant. And we're going to very quickly go over those. Dale Moses pointed out that diagonal ships really don't benefit from reverse thrusters. And while this runs contrary to my personal expectations, I'm happy to for science this. So these are going to go. As you can see, we've already made... I, I, I was busy off camera, okay? Uh, there were lots of suggestions that disruptor craft are very good and whilst I've not really had an opportunity to see how good they are in the early sector because very few ships use shields, we're about to jump up in sector difficulty where this would really start to shine. So I have added those in and that has necessitated uh, another upgrade and uh, Nomi amongst many others offered this suggestion. Thank you very much for that. A medium reactor would effectively double the efficiency of any crew hauling energy for a little over twice the space of a small reactor, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice to increase the efficiency of the craft. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up, though uh, the uh, comment from Dale Moses came in just as I was about to record, so I'm going to uh, set that one up right now. Uh, this actually ties into something else. Uh, Ember Blaze, uh, lovely name, by the way, and a couple of others really kindly pointed out, you can simply right-click the mirror mode. Now, I was aware that you could shift this around, but if you right-click on it, you can decide what axis the mirror line is on. And in fact, you can add more of them. How amazing is that? That is truly, truly wonderful. So uh, this makes building diagonal ships so much easier. Uh, right, so let's get all of this set up. We're just gonna shunt this all down like so. Actually, I've got to make sure I've selected it first and then cut. Uh, you know what? I could stretch it out a bit, I suppose. 
Uh, I'm not sure if there's really a want for that. Uh, it's going to put an awful lot of heavy armor at the front. Let's let's go for a little bit more of a modest design, shall we? Something like that. This gives us quite a lot of firepower without uh, nixing how effective the uh, the firing arc of that said firepower is. And uh, also the, our acceleration. We're losing our forward th uh, facing thrusters, so we're not going to be able to slow down as much. It all comes down to turning based on these. Uh, again, this runs... Contrary to my expectations, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Also, that's going to mean I'm going to need to repaint it, though uh, it, it almost looks okay, actually. It, it's not going to need too aggressive of a repaint, thankfully. But uh, I'll do that again off camera. The painting takes me, well, for the, the two uh, the two fighters, it took me about half an hour. But for the Hercules, for example, and the Scab, you know, we're, we're looking at like 45 minutes sometimes, especially with the Hercules, because I was learning a new skill set with how to make the uh, shadows look like uh, like uh, sort of a quasi 3D. But there we go. That's uh, the 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 lion shit of the comments done. Sadly, we're going to say goodbye to the fighter. Uh, are you sure you wish to abandon the the selected ships? Yes. Hopefully the crew come back to me. Uh, we will see. Yes, they are coming back to me. That's fantastic. All right. So, Hercules, your first job in this episode is not to smack into the fire ant. Oh, my lord. Why? Why are you like this, Hercules? My goodness. Please just... Oh, you see... Now, this is a part where not having forward-facing thrusters really hurts. Lateral movement. I've got a single thruster to try and push it. And I have to push the ship forward in order to do it. How can... How um... We've got a magical fire ant. It can move without doing anything to move. That's, that's fantastic. You can drift backwards in space without anything propelling you backwards. I never knew you were a wizard. Uh, right, let's uh, go ahead and turn the uh, mirror mode back to its norm, and then whomp. Fare thee well, humble fighter. You will be missed. For now. All right, the humble fighter is no more. It will live on in our memories, but I've gone ahead and I've renamed the Fire Ant to the DPR-3 just to keep the numbers consistent. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear out what's left in this system. There isn't actually that much left here for us to worry about, but there are a couple of unknown signals that I would like to scan and a couple of enemies I wouldn't mind seeing if we can fight off. Now, I believe these are going to be static defenses, given the type of area this is. Go ahead. Oh, that one's uh, seen better days. Uh, let's actually see what our fire ant can do if it's only a cannon enemy i imagine the fire ant might stand an okay chance of taking it out though the fire ant's gonna have to get pretty bloody close before engaging oh it's point defense okay i'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest I, I feel that this is perhaps a bit of weak source fight here but i'm going to have to change the engagement range just to make sure that it can use its disruptors so let's save that as its new attack default and let's get you in there nice and close and you can start punching through all the way to the cockpit uh we are actually taking some plinking from their point defense so uh how about we uh take those out your disruptors should easily be able to shut the uh weapon systems down uh they are reorienting to try and bring their uh, other side? No, they, they've decided against it. They're, they're not actually going to bring the other side over. Fair enough. Well, we took a bit of armor damage, and we're going to take armor damage with this craft. It's the only thing that defends it. And uh, that is easy enough repaired. If we just move over the wreck of whatever we've just blown up, there is almost certainly going to be enough scrap for us to use. All right. Dapper 2, the Hercules. I'm just going to have you replenish your uh, stocks of coils. And while Dapathu is doing that, I'm just going to pop around the various signals, hand in the bounties, and get ready to jump out. There are a plethora of wrecks here and there. I will be picking up any of the uh, very interesting ores, for example, uranium right here. I'll always try and grab that wherever I can, uh, simply because it's rare. And uh, if nothing else, I can sell it for a lot of money. Tritanium as well. Likewise, fairly weak. Uh, rare compared to the other ores. But uh, I'm not going to keep you around for this part. You've seen me clear out a si system much like this before. But following that, we're going to be jumping on to our new home. Now, I've considered going to Komori or Magrera. 
I think we're going to go to Magre simply because A, it's going to be our introduction to the Centauri Imperium, but B, I'm not too comfortable about taking in our recently redesigned Strikecraft that really hasn't had that much combat experience into a level 5 system where, where the minimum difficulty of an enemy is going to be level 5. Let's go with minimum difficulty is 4 and the max is 6. I'm also quite interested in seeing how much uh, higher the difficulty of the various uh, bases will be compared... Oh, actually we haven't finished uh, grabbing all of that. Uh, where the, the bases sit based on the difficulty of the system as a whole because as we've seen it's definitely a lot higher in the starter system which is only a one to three the bases were a level six Ooh, gold we'll definitely come and pick that one up then as well all right i will bring you back in a few moments and we'll be ready to make our jump Okay, you, you, you know how I said I was going to for science, not having reverse thrusters? I feel that I have given it a, a, an honest try. And in fact, no, I do. I do need reverse thrusters. Perhaps your pilots are just less derpy than mine. But either way, not being able to go backwards is proving to be more trouble than it's worth. All right, we have found ourselves at the warp gate. We have plotted in the course. However, there was a warning that not all of our ship uh, are going to have uh, enough jump fuel to get there. In fact, I'll counter the, the jump just so I can show. The scab is going to need 25. It can only store 20. And we don't even have a jump for the Hercules yet. So let's quickly uh, set that up. Our, our little fighter, the fire ant, is actually going to be able to jump for a very, very modest four jump fuel. And this actually uh, gives me an opportunity to point something out. Quite a lot of people were worried that without any storage, you couldn't have a jump drive. No, you absolutely can. I, I thought I'd uh, shown that in the last episode, but I, I might have uh, suffered collateral damage during cutting. Uh, but you can just transfer it over. The jump drive is, in effect, a 20 big storage for Hyperium. I'm getting a little bit, a little bit concerned about how easy a shot down to this gigantic reactor would be. So instead, we're going to do this. Let's uh, move these up down, and then let's make my life easier by adding in the uh, the mirror line. We're going to take that out. There we go. And then I can add back in the armor in the middle here, and I think that will be very good. It'll also have the added benefit, and I'm always looking out for this, of moving this away so the DPR1 is going to be legible once again. Look, okay, fashion souls. I, I warned you at the beginning. It's always going to be a concern that I am I am bearing in mind. Though I do need to move around the paint a little bit because I've moved around the thruster configuration. Uh, I'll get to that in in a uh, off camera as usual. Now for the Hercules. Okay, so you can see on the uh, blueprint that I have penciled in the enriched uranium factory we don't have we need a lot of barrels of enriched uranium to make this work but we do have the diamond factory and i have in fact been making some diamonds which is very very nice uh but i'm going to discard those modifications because we now need to pop in the hyper drives let's go ahead and try and put them somewhat central shall we i could pop them here or i could edge them out to the side actually it gets worse and worse and worse it's hard to say where would be best uh, let's let's just go ahead and pop them in here. Uh, additionally, I'm sure much to the joy of quite a few people in uh, <laughs> in the comments, I have gone ahead and I filled these in for now. I've noticed a couple of people mentioning in the comments though that there is no there's no penalty to moving uh, perpendicular to the direction of travel for the walkways. However. I received fairly early on uh, suggestions in the comments, or rather advice in the comments, that that isn't the case, that there is a movement penalty. And it's something to the tune of, if you're walking against the direction of flow, you'll lose 75% of your walk speed. If you're moving perpendicular to the flow, so you're walking across the uh, the, move, the, the mover, you'll lose 25% of your speed. But if you're walking with the direction of flow, you'll gain 50%. So there is a slight cost to be considered. Um, whether this works out more efficient or less, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, as long as long as people are happy. Right, there we go. That's all the, the changes that we're going to need to make. Now, hopefully that hasn't messed with the color scheme. No, I was very careful to put this where I knew I wasn't going to build any factories. <laughs> there we are. It is finally time for us to jump 
to the next system. So let's go ahead, plot the course. Uh, Hercules is going to require 40, 43. Oh. Well, now. Wasn't expecting that. All right. Let me fix that up a little bit. And there we go. I've just popped down the uh, another small hyperdrive right at the back of the craft. That should actually increase its efficiency up to a, quite a quite a good 62%. I'm going to need probably one somewhere at the front or two to just maintain symmetry, but uh, we'll see how that one goes. But that should at least give us enough uh, potential to store Hyperion, but also improve the efficiency to the point where this isn't going to be as uh, as expensive indeed yeah it only now requires 32 so that addition it has been uh, much worth it let's get everyone hooked up and we'll see who gets there first okay yeah as, as expected scarab first hercules second then fire and third engage that's a bit of a long jump to be fair Ooh, nice orange background all right let's find ourselves a station aurora station let's uh, head on down there first and foremost and we'll fly in formation for now let's uh, just reorganize ourselves really you're all organizing around the dapper too no 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 can I can I can I tell you to do that in a different way uh, sure that's a little bit better at least you're protecting the dapper two now. <laughs> well I guess the dapper two is the larger ship really please Try not to mate with the uh, jump lanes, unless that would produce our own jump lane that we could uh, charge a toll on. That I would be all for, but uh, we're going to go down here as quickly as we can, find out what there is around in this system, though we're going to pass by some enemies down here. This might be an opportunity for a bit of a scrap. Sure, okay, let's uh, get in there. I would like you to uh, shadow the scarab for this. The Fire Ant is ever so slightly faster than the Scarab. The Scarab has a maximum speed of about 60, 63, something like that, whereas the Fire Ant is up in the 75s. It's a far cry from the, like, the 90s that I would like it to be, but it is doable. It is, it is workable. I want the Fire Ant to be faster than the Scarab for obvious reasons. Now then, let's have a look at what we're going to be facing in here. Nothing too worrying from you what about the second and really nothing to worrying there either okay then scarab you go ahead and pop this one straight away just go straight down for the reactor no, no reason to be fancy about this and we will have the fire ant move in and attack uh what do i want to take out first you know what you may as well go for straight for the uh the cockpit there i don't see much reason to do anything else though that being said i could i could uh drain the energy out of the weapon systems especially considering we're going to be uh basically just hull tanking this well armor tanking i suppose but uh let's have a watch of how this goes uh, that one's already been drained completely and the cockpit is getting popped nice and fast so this really wasn't much of a threat in here okay that was uh beautiful work and we will immediately move onwards to the next conquest i'll just mark this down for the future as rex let's see what you've got for us right so we've actually made our way here thank you and uh, that'll give us a little bit of uh, cash and stations Ooh, rescue Etrex Station. A distress signal has been received from Etrex Station. Bandits are attacking the station in overwhelming numbers. The station's governor is promising 13,500 credits to any Cosmodea who can destroy the bandits and rescue the station. Danger level 5. Okay, I will accept. Also, uh, a, a level 6 danger? Uh, requesting assistance for any cosmetic to help with a variety of... Oh, okay, that was just purely missions, which is fine. Uh, a level 4 to 6 pirate hunter. And uh, still only a danger level 6 base mission. All right, well, uh, I'll definitely pick that up. There we go, and we'll hand that in as well. Furthermore, is there anything I want to pick up in here, I wonder? I mean, there is the tractor beam, and that's always an option, but uh, I think I've got to grab the boost thruster. And the first thing I'm going to do with said boost thruster, again, let's not get that close. I'll make them a little bit anxious, I'm sure. Right, uh, let's go ahead and slap these in here. Now, go into planning mode, because I'm not sure how much of a difference this is going to make. But we'll pop the main thruster here. I'm going to keep the main thruster. I want that, uh, I want that involved. And at this point, hmm... You know what we could do this 
and just accept that we're not going to have the point defense over on this side. I'm not doing this in mirror mode because I'm a dummy. Let me do that again. That should overwrite everything as needed. There we are. I will allow that one to stay. And I guess I can, I can allow this one to stay as well. And this time we're going to even leave them to have doors. I know. Crazy. Uh, there we are. That'll, that'll be a solid little bit of uh, extra maneuvering thrusters. And finally, let's see what the boost thruster does. Now that requires eight tritanium to install. Uh, a variant of the large thruster that can inject raw plasma directly into its combustors for a powerful but short-lived boost. All right, so let's have a look at the uh, comparison. This requires ramp up time is two seconds. Uh, ramp up time, two seconds. If the boost is off, it's ramp up time, two seconds. Thrust 3200. So it's the same if the boost mode is turned off. But if boost mode is turned on, it has a zero second ramp up time, but 9,600 kilonewtons of thrust. Power use is 0.6 per second at 100% thrust or 0.3 for continuous use. I imagine 0.3 is what we've got over here. Does that tell me? No, it doesn't. But uh, either way, I think we're going to go with you and we'll see how this helps. Let's just slap that in there. Get, once again, get rid of the doors. Don't need them. I'm assuming we don't need them, but that should allow us to maintain our preferred range. Wow, that is a huge area there. This thing needs to a lot of room to operate, which I guess is, is understandable, but uh, my lord. Uh, the other thing I could do is have a large thruster at the back and then uh, a huge thruster as well at this point if I really wanted to give this ship some oomph. Now that would necessitate moving our little uh, <laughs> jump drives again. But I may be okay with that. I don't know. It's uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a tricky one. I am I am tempted though, having gigantic thrusters on this ship, so it can really get into trouble fast. Sure, okay. I've I've been playing with this idea for long enough. All right, let's go ahead once again. Remove the doors. Though now I need to move this around a little bit more. Uh, we can have that one right there, and pad this out with a little bit more armor i think there we go and we'll allow entry in there but it does put us back to uh, the same problem as we had before of where i put the jump drives hmm i guess one way of doing it is simply to elongate this area uh, that would work uh, what kind of station is this yes yeah, it's, it's a bunk for our weapon so i don't really want to do away with that um but However, considering that we don't really use the jump drives aggressively, I could have one there and one down here, I suppose. Uh, make it so. And then I'm just going to set these up with their uh, designation. So that is purely for the uh, Hyperion supply that will be loaded into here as a, as a consequence. Now let's make sure that power is going to get down there as it should. There we go. Everything is where it needs to be. And now, the scarab should be significantly faster, ideally. Let's just watch it all get loaded in. It's even got a little bit more turning as, as well. Let's hope that this uh, works out. I, I'm, I'm quickly getting to the point where I'm, I'm considering just throwing in a, uh, another reactor down here instead of the capacitors. We'll, we'll see how that goes, though. Right, okay, so we've got a load of missions, but the ones that we really care about, of course, are the pirate bases. So, let's find uh, really only one. Well, I guess we would get a couple others if we made contact with some stations. But for now, let's go and make contact with some pirates who probably would very much like us not to. All right. You've got a target which should allow you to open up your large thrusters, or rather the huge thrusters completely. There we go. Once we've hit the full burn, 83 meters a second. Not bad at all. That is now faster than the Dapper 3, which is perhaps not as it should be, but it is as it is, so we're just going to have to live with it. Right, Dapper 1, could you please just pop their cockpit? And whilst you're working on that, Dapper 3, could you go for their weapon systems? Not that actually cannons won't care. Uh, go for... is that a boost thruster? 
It is. A, so they're just using a boost thrust there, just as, as a regular thrust. Okay, I, I kind of like it. Uh, could you attack from behind, though? Somewhere around here would do. Now, I want to see. Are these set up to be used as boosts? Boost off. No, nope, boost on. Definitely boost on. Uh, auto fire thrusters, no. But am I going to have to toggle that every time, or is it just something that they can use whenever they want? Uh, looks like they're immediately holding position. Oh, that's fantastic. Greatly approve. I gave you several extra seconds of uh, combat before they managed to close the gap. All right. Very much happy with that, actually. Okay, time for the Scarab to activate its reverse thrust. Currently, they're just activ uh, activating as normal. Oh, we can just do it down here, which is quite nice. Or you can hit Control-B, and we'll get a massive amount of reverse thrust there. Uh, it's not quite enough to overcome, but it's good enough, I think. It's doing a hell of a job against the enemy, that's for certain. Uh, let's just uh, dig through the enemy's weapon systems here. There we go, and they're gone. That was not too bad at all. They did switch target a little bit, so I imagine we've got a tiny bit of armor to repair. Nothing too uh, troublesome. All right, I'm getting used to the way the bo boosters are working. I honestly assumed, based on the description, well, uh, to be fair, thinking about the description now, it wasn't like it's expressly said this, but I assumed that they would still be automatic. It's just if I set them to, to be used as boosters, they would activate as as a booster for a short burst and then have to recharge before they would do it again and it would kind of you know just toggle back and forth whenever they were refueled rather than i have to tell it to use the booster and then it shuts it down into normal mode which seems to be the case but now that i understand that that's how it works we can work around that all right let's get on to the pirate base all right, we've made it over to our destination. We've got a base, so a bit of an escort. Well, I guess not really an escort, more of a guard, I suppose. Uh, we do not have eyes on any kind of defense turrets, though. So it might be that this uh, these guards are the only thing protecting the base, which would be particularly nice for us if I'm honest. We've always got some sort of large uh, structure around. Ooh. Well, now, you are, um, you've got nukes. Okay, so, uh, it seems that the, uh, whilst it's still marked as a level six threat, it is a significantly higher threat than that, or at least I consider it a significantly higher threat than that. Let's, uh, in fact, just all stop right here. Just hang tight. We are at the extreme range of that base, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be able to engage us. So, in fact, let's uh, let's back off a little bit. Let's uh, wait for the enemy to come out to us, ideally. Here we go. Can I have the Dapper 3 engage? You know what? No, no let's, let's just dive in. Where are we likely to be able to go for? Now, if I could get behind it with the Dapper 3, then that would be amazing. Right, we've got their attention. Let's try and scooch around. Oh, they were going for us, and they did a decent chunk of damage, to be fair. But let's uh, go in. What, well, really? What do you mean? Am I completely bad? Oh, I can actually heal in combat. That seems a little bit broken, if I'm honest. Uh, oh, right. We were about to try and pick up steel coils. There's crew quarters there. Crew quarters there, I think that, uh, oh, never mind, we, we'd we already gutted it. That's why I couldn't do anything. Fair enough. Right. We did lose some crew. They, they actually got busted out, it seems. Fair enough. All right, so. We're going to have to try and call this base. Going for the bridges, there's two bridges. I think it would be better just to try and burrow all the way through. And since this is what we're going to do, I would like you to approach cautiously and then engage. Just scooch forward a little bit. There we are. And we'll see how this goes. I wonder if it's going to be able to engage. No, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I think we're being very, very cheeky with this. But I'm okay with it because I don't want to tangle with nukes. Pop, there we go. A base down already. And with that gone, we'll just go for the reactor over here. But we're starting to see craft now with significantly larger 
uh, reactors, which is probably a sign that they are much more dangerous. There we are. And let's have you activate your boost thrusters. There we, we should be able to stay well outside of your range. All the while burrowing through this armor. That being said, you're about to be within range, I imagine, of the fire ant. Should we try and back off or just get involved as well? Uh, go for the weapon systems. Just shut them down if you can. Lots of damage on the front there, my lord. We lost thrusters. Uh, really? Did you just rake the laser right across the fire ant? That's rude. Let's see what the uh, repair cost. They're actually relatively slight. Just coils and, uh, and plates there. All right. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but sure. Okay, moving on to the rescue mission. I'm going to have Dapper 2 slide on in and start taking apart that base as soon as it can. And I'll bring you back for base number two. Or, oh, well, rather, station number two. Though this one we're not going to try and explode. Unless we can just let it accidentally, tragically explode before we can get there to save them. We saw how good that was for us last time. Oh, ho our very first shielded opponent. Well, now, let's get the fire ant involved in this. Not that it'll really matter against the shield, I suppose. And honestly, you're probably going to be able to just cut straight through the shield. Nevertheless, I want to see how uh, the fire ant helps out here. Also, activate your reverse thrust. There we go, we're just melting that shield down, and then we'll be straight into the shield room itself. Getting through the armor, getting through the shield. Oh no, the shield's back up. Where? Oh, oh, we've got missiles incoming. They did a fair bit of damage here. It looks like uh, they are selecting different targets, and the ship itself is going for. Oh, poor Fire Ant. Fire Ant not having a good day. The uh, flak wasn't able to take it out because we started to turn. Okay, well, uh, gonna have to be a little bit more micromanaging than it seems. But the lack of point defense on the fire ant, very much a problem here. Okay, a little bit of time spent harvesting the wreck of our enemy and we are repaired once again. But this has definitely illustrated that we really can't do without some degree of point defense. So with that in mind, perhaps what we could do instead is drop the laser blaster in favor of point defense. It's a bit of a, an interesting switch, I know, but uh, hopefully this will help out. So let's pop those there. I should really be doing this in uh, designer mode, but oh well. And we're going to pop point defense right at the front. At the very least, we'll have some protection against incoming fire uh, forward facing. I suppose I could do something like that here though as well. And though it's gonna require a bit of a circuitous route to get to that one, since they're gonna have to go through the bridge in order to get there, but uh, it should be okay. Uh, we'll get rid of that just for the symmetry's sake. I know it would be easy if they just went up there and across, but shh, it's fine. Uh, and over here, there we go. Don't need a door there, though. All right. Not terrible, but also not amazing by uh, by a big stretch. We have dropped down its capabilities in terms of combat a fair bit. But, uh, oh, actually, Fire Ant, you don't need to do that since Fire Ant can't actually pick anything up, but we'll see how that goes. All right. The Dapper to the Hercules is still on its way to the base. Should be able to stock up with a lot of stuff, especially considering the nuclear missiles down there. One would hope... That, that is going to be some really, really nice uh, wreckage for us. Ooh, actually, let's uh, reverse up a little bit. Uh, we've got something following the minor modulus. Send in the Scarab to check that out. It looks like they're heading back over to the old base. Perhaps a uh, pirate career. There we are. Let the Dapper 2 deal with that. And let's go and see what you've got. You are another shielded enemy. Much, much bigger cannons on this one. Uh, though you're actually flying faction colors, which is a bit of an interesting one. Uh, nevertheless, let's get the Scarab to... I'm, I'm seeing more boost thrusters too. Uh, let's try and pop the bridge. Just go straight for the bridge if you can. 
And once you've engaged, I'll have you draw back. Let's activate the uh, reverse thrust. Now, they're not using theirs as boosters, so they're not really closing in on us. But I think they have, in fact, changed target. So let's get the fire ant out of the way. There we are. That's a bit of a shame. But thankfully, having the scarab here with its point defense is helpful. And the scarab managed to finish it off. Okay, the maneuverability on the fire ant. Honestly, you were a little bit more of a... Uh, a uh, drawback there than I would like, but we'll we'll put that down to just you know growing pains. But yeah, it's very very clear that I need to work a little bit more on my uh, on my ability to steer my craft. Uh, nevertheless, we found an asteroid field, which is probably going to be well. Actually, I was going to say it's going to be defensive uh, bases, but it doesn't look like that is the case down here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, you shouldn't be too. Ooh, that was a railgun shot. And we've got a bunch of missiles coming in as well. Let's see what we can do here. The uh, point defense is definitely helpful, though. It is helping with taking out the cannons, which is wonderful. Okay, so I'm glad with that change at the very least. Double shields, heavy, uh, heavy blasters. Now, the disruptors here are going to be extremely important. But what I don't want is for you to go for... Uh, you are going straight for the, uh, the fire ant. Are you going to be able to shoot? No, I don't think you're going to be able to shoot down those uh, weapon systems. But the disruptor should take these shields offline pretty much straight away. We are basically just tr trading blows, though, which is uh, not great for us. But in combination with the scarab that has managed to shut down one of the shields and allowed it to get through a little bit faster. Now you're getting an opportunity to go in for the reactor though. So please make that your primary target. Scarab, you can go ahead and activate your reverse boosters. Just keep at distance. I'm really liking those reverse boosters. I'm actually strongly thinking of just replacing all of them with the same thing. Um, that much like we've seen with enemy craft doing that I think that would be grand because our ion beam right now is struggling to punch through these shields can you even keep up I don't think you can maybe I should put those uh, large boosters on our fighter as well that would be a bit of an interesting one but this there we go we've got a good angle there now, I'm not too worried about the uh, lasers simply because the uh, the scarabs Flak will be able to shoot those down, but these shields are becoming quite the nuisance. Uh, and now they're within disruptor range. Still, the disruptors should be shot down by the flak batteries as well. And as we can see, we are managing the ammo reasonably. Uh, but yeah, our, our fighter is really, really far out there, unfortunately. This engagement going much like the last, but I allowed the uh, scarab to get a lot closer this time in hopes that it would draw much more of the fight. Really don't get stuck on the asteroid, please. Uh, the ion beam is struggling though, though this offers us a perfect opportunity to just go straight for the reactor here if I'm able to, I would very much like to. Uh, there we are, the ion beam is up again. Ah, just as the shield came back up. Okay, so Fire Ant, could you target their thrusters, please? I don't think there's any point in disrupting a reactor, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Either way, let's just try and cut through one side if we're able, since that one to one, the ion beam that we've got will overwhelm a shield, given enough time. And can you go for the reactor, please? And indeed, thank you. There we are. The disruptor shells are close again but not nearly fast enough to get to us i'm wondering if there is any kind of propagation with the oh oh you had two reactors my bad for missing that but it looks like we've just popped the uh cockpit anyway but uh i have seen some stuff in the comments about uh, disrupt the fire basically uh propagating through armor blocks something i need to pay a little bit more attention to i think do you need any help? No, you're good. All right, well, we're getting a heck of a lot of interesting combat here. I, I'm very, very glad 
that we took the time to make a fighter before we started having these these fights because I'm definitely starting to feel that uh, the Scarab is reaching a point where we are now noticing the inefficiencies of its combat systems. Ooh, now this is an interesting design for a diagonal ship. I am loving the way they're using shields. And look at all of the things that they're running off just a tiny reactor. That being said, these cannons don't consume power, so that does make some more sense. Now, Fire Ant, I'm going to want you to uh, slip to the side there because this looks like it might be a bit of a struggle for you. That said, though, I'm wondering if these shields are really going to protect. It looks like we, if we can get the angle right, the uh, Scarab is just going to be able to cut straight down the middle. Uh, it's banging against one shield at least, but uh, once you re-engage, it might be... Oh, well, we've got a very exposed cockpit there. You know what, let's get in behind as close as we can. Let the uh, point defense also get involved and see what we can do. Now... Let's have the Scarab keep distance. Uh, there should be another enemy nearby. I think it was floating around somewhere, but uh, looks like, honestly, the Scarab had no trouble with that one by itself. That was a very nice design, though, and it was good to see a diagonal ship using shields like that, as that is uh, good inspiration for our own design. But we are getting ever closer to the station that we're meant to protect uh hopefully they're doing okay who knows though <laughs> dapper do is little by little pulling apart this station at this point i don't think we're actually storing any plates we've already got a cargo hole full of them so uh, it's not really a high priority but uh little by little we're completing a bunch of bounties i'm sure that we haven't even taken yet so hopefully we'll have a bunch of things to hand in once we get there, that is a carbon asteroid. Let's mark that one as well. There we go. Dapper 2 will be happy for that. Right. Looks like we are now at the location of the... Ra Ooh, okay, so there's four raiders. Now, I'm hoping the station is doing a bit to try and keep them from destroying it. That being said, I uh, wonder if you can, in fact, just lose the station. I mean, we saw a big chunk taken out of the station in the first sector. Oh. It's a defense platform. Well, this is a little bit uh, different from what I was expecting, I will be honest. But let's get in there and, and uh, take this out then. Let's uh, just cut straight through to the bridge or the reactor. I don't really care. Uh, that, however, is a ship. Let's get the fire ant down here and get you involved in engaging that from, let's take you nice safe distance behind. We'll see how this goes with the Scarab can probably afford to advance a little bit more on this weapons platform. There we go. And I would like you next to go for this one. Go straight for the reactor. Well, take out the flak battery first uh, and then, then, in fact, go for the disruptor and maybe then straight onto the bridge. We'll see how that goes down. Ooh, okay. It's it's decided that the uh, fire ant is a preferred target. So fire ant actually kind of needs to not be there anymore, I'm going to say. Uh, because that flak battery will ruin the fire ant. Uh, you just carry on. There we go. We've drawn the attention with the Scarab, and the Scarab should be able to just dig through. Scarab, go ahead, take that out. Fire Ant can swoop up and perhaps even take on this station by itself if we're lucky. Let's bring it about there so its uh, point defense will act, uh, won't be uh, distracted by too much firepower. Uh, Scarab, go ahead. Uh, you can dig through whichever one you want to, honestly. Uh, or, you know, accidentally cut up the, the ship in front whilst you're working towards uh, getting to the ship behind. Oh, I'm pulling away the fire ant. My bad. Uh, fire ant, head in here. And try and just take out the, the bridge for now. The Scarab is the primary target of the, the more significant threats in this fight. There we are. And I'm going to say go ahead and use your boosters just to get back out of their easy uh, engagement range. Oh, that is, those boosters are fantastic. And I can only imagine having four of them is going to be incredible. Now, how are you doing in terms of your point defense? Are they able to mostly take out the incoming fire? Not really. Okay. Well, given that, then, I would like you to just back off. 
keep your uh, point defense facing forward. Let's not take any unnecessary risks here. Uh, we'll have the Scarab finish off this uh, this job down here. We'll go straight for the bridge, I think. There's not really much reason not to. And we'll do so from about here. Should be fine. We'll scooch up the fire ant over to one of the wrecks so that we can use it for repairing. Uh, okay, if you want to engage from that side, that's also fine. There we go. And jobs are good in. Right. Let's have you repair. Shouldn't be too expensive. Does the scarab need any repairs? It needs a little bit. Nothing too terrible, though. Right, let's have a look. Uh, lots of damage, but nothing particularly super expensive. Actually, no hyper cars. No, they're regular cars. I was going to say, if those were hyper cars, then this would have been a very, uh, very fortuitous event indeed. But there we go. We have rescued the station. Do we get fame? We do not. No fame for us. Much sad. Uh, I will, however, take all of the fugitive bounties. Let's see if we get anything for those. Uh, a little bit of fame for this. Nice. And still no fame for the level fives. Okay, so this is very much telling me that we shouldn't be here. This is not the place for us at this point. We probably need to be somewhere like a level seven based on that. But at the very least, we can hire out some more crew. So I will accept that one. The pirate base uh, is probably still giving us enough uh, to make this worth our time here but it would be nice to get a little bit more i'm going to say uh do we have any more pirate bases around we have an unknown signal over yonder an unknown signal over there we've got a couple of odds and sods around the place but uh, i would very very much like to hand in this particular quest and for that one let's see if we can just jump over there there we go gonna be a fairly inexpensive hop and we'll hand this one in. Uh, we may as well bring over the fire ant as well. It's probably going to be even cheaper. Yeah, it's only three. Uh, just as soon as they are... Ooh, why is the scarab not heading over? Scarab is currently... Are you not charging the... Ah. Yeah, I hadn't uh, told them to charge that one up. My bad. There we go. That should pop over there now. And we can hand this in and possibly get a few more crew besides fugitive bounty destroy pirate base this still gives oh no no we're not even getting any any fame for that one now either well that's unfortunate not gonna lie okay well i think that has pretty much put the nail in the coffin for this sector if there's no point in us even clearing out the pirate bases around here then we may as well choose a new destination um Perhaps uh, Kamor is going to be okay enough, but uh, considering the pirate bases were still a level six down here, maybe uh, Vemex is where we need to be, a level eight to ten. But given that our fleet right now is already taking damage in any particular engagement i think we're going to need a redesign before we jump to the next sector. All right, I think that's a good enough place for us to wrap up today's episode. Uh, we've got plenty of combat experience with the Fire Ant at this point. And I've already got some ideas on how we can redesign that, considering we're now leaning more into it being a, uh, an, a, a strike craft rather than a fighter. Uh, the Scarab as well, a couple of ideas, not least of which adding in another pair of boosters. We'll do that in the next episode as well. But I'm starting to feel like a missile ship would probably significantly improve our odds in any particular engagement. So we may be building a new ship or we might just be adapting our current ships, perhaps even expanding out the fire ant enough that it can have some sort of missile capacity. Either that or we'll pop some missiles on the Scarab. We'll, we'll have to make that decision in the coming episode. But I really do hope you have enjoyed this one. As always, I look forward to any feedback you have for me down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy what you saw and want to see more, consider leaving a like as well while you're down there. But until next time, do take care, everyone.